Ceridine has been in the armor business for a long time. In fact, we were on the ground floor in the 1970s when the United States Army at Watertown Arsenal, a place that doesn't even exist now, began establishing a database. What ceramic stops, what bullet, at what weight, what thickness, what cost. And we're uh, one of the key suppliers of these materials. The material that eventually evolved out of all of this uh, was a boron carbide, B4C, which is the lightest weight, hardest uh, material known to man for these types of applications, and it stops bullets. So starting after the uh, terrible uh, deaths of our American uh, special ops guys in Mogadishu, that was 1993, of which later on a movie was written, Black Hawk Down, it became clear that you needed a better, lighter weight product. And so we developed uh, boron carbide plates that were backed with some sort of a polymer uh, so that you would break the bullet. And indeed today we stop uh, bullets at point blank range. We'll stop an armor piercing machine gun bullet right against your chest if, if that ever happened. So the, the, uh, the total uh, product started out as something uh, called uh, Small Arms Protective Inserts, which the acronym was SAPI, and uh, as well as special uh, programs that we do for other parts of the uh, United States Armed Forces. Uh, not, then it evolved when uh, the enemy, which were primarily the insurgents in Iraq, got hold of uh, armor-piercing bullets, and then it became what they called ESAPI, Enhanced Small Arms Protective Inserts. And now there's even a more lethal bullet, uh, which uh, the new product of which we've won a multi-billion dollar uh, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract. It's called XSAPI. So over the last five years, Ceridine, which was a modest sized company, uh, has shipped over $1.8 billion of this armor program and we continue to develop a wide range of offerings including uh, what we refer to as mission specific uh, armor systems and now that we're going into Afghanistan there's additional requirements particularly since our guys are going to be climbing high up not too much oxygen you have an, a new enemy in the Taliban probably with all kinds of other weapons some less lethal but very effective because they are scampering around the rocks and mountains which they know very well. When a, um, the whole idea, uh, first of all you can stop a lot of what they call low, low threats like uh, the police define uh, the threat as a handgun. You don't need a ceramic to stop a handgun. You could use Kevlar or other materials that act as a, a bullet catcher if you will. Once you get into automatic weapons for the military or high-powered rifles, you can't catch the bullet. You have to stop that bullet and break it. And so the use of a ceramic, such as the boron carbide I mentioned earlier, is exactly what happens. This uh, very lethal, high-energy projectile, uh, projectile comes in, uh, it hits the ceramic, and uh, the bullet breaks, often the core, if it's in armor-piercing round, that will also break. The ceramic breaks also. In a very small area though, you'd be surprised, it's only about an inch or so in diameter. And then those particles, then they're over a wide enough area that the force has been spread out. Now you can use a more traditional methodology behind the plate and catch all the fragments. So it's really a system consisting of very hard face plate, and something that's more of a bullet catcher. The ceramic of which Ceridine, of course, produces literally hundreds of thousands of plates. We, we were shipping uh, well over 100,000 plates in, in the heyday of Iraq. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a theoretically dense, very high purity, controlled microstructure ceramic. So as the uh, threat increases, uh, you may want to modify the ceramic, but not because of purity. Uh, you could make it thicker, for example, or 
you could make the backing thicker, or you could use uh, a different methodology for applying the backing. And all of these give you a very wide um, uh, sampling of how to keep increasing. Now the key is, of course, is to stop a higher threat without increasing the weight. So that's difficult, and uh, now uh, we are approaching where you really just can't do that. So now we're looking at uh, different ideas uh, for uh, helping our, our soldiers. And we work, Ceridine works very closely directly with the military. We have 20 ballistic engineers. We shoot more bullets than anybody but the United States government, you know. So uh, we know a lot. Uh, the actual ceramic is uh, pretty darn good. We were 85% defense only five, six years ago, and now we're about 50%. And uh, we acquired a, a large German company, ESK of Kempton, Germany, in 2004. That made us vertically integrated, where we make both the powders, we make the ceramics, we do the designing, and as I said earlier, we, we do a lot of the testing ourselves, not only on armor, but a whole spectrum. So the other 50% is really an industrial, uh, industrial base. Uh, right now, one of our fastest growing areas is involved in uh, photovoltaic solar energy. Uh, I personally, and I'm the founder of the company, by the way, in 1967, am very focused on solar energy because to uh, get the silicon into the wafer shape, they have to melt it, and they have to melt it in very high purity, fused silica ceramic, and we're really good at that. And we have expanded our facilities in, in the United States. We have a major facility in Tianjin, China, about two hours south of Beijing. We've announced another major factory uh, in uh, China, $22 million. So uh, we expect that, yeah, only only. Uh, although we may put a little more equipment there. We're, we're having a good experience in uh, China now.